Please join me in welcoming Congressman Sandy Lovin. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I thought I was going to be interviewed by Chuck Stokes. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm pleased to be here. Hannah Vera Cruz from our office is also here. And it was suggested I say just a few words. I do go back a few years to the Committee of 100. And in a sense, it was a very different place, but in a real sense, rather similar. Um, I was elected to the Board of Supervisors. I was appointed. Uh, George Kuhn was the mayor. He was a Republican. I was a Democrat. But we decided, he just decided to appoint me because he thought that the regional issues really were beyond any particular politics. He also knew that because the chairman of the Board of Supervisors of uh, Oakland County was my uncle, who was one of the leading Republicans in the county. He was about the only Republican in our family. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he was born and raised, as my mother was, in Birmingham, and was head of the board of the, the Ways and Means Committee of Oakland County for 30 years. It showed his power when I was appointed by George to the Board of Supervisors. I was appointed to a key committee. We were in the minority. It was the Dog Catcher Committee. <laughs> <laughs> and I served ably on that committee. We didn't do anything. but. We lived, my late wife and I raised our kids uh, in Berkeley. And in those days, we had one car. And I often took uh, the bus downtown here, just across the street where I practiced law. And I also took the train. And there was a train from Royal Oak. It ran three times a day and came back three times. And if I missed the train, I took, uh, took a bus. And it was pretty rapid transit. And I think that interested me in the Committee of 100 and the issue of how we were going to try to bind together or at least connect together this large widely spread suburban and urban area. Um, and it was an immense challenge. And I think some of them very much remain. Some of them have been resolved. Some of them have been addressed. Some of them less so. Some of them, like transit, remain right still in front of us. And I insisted uh, in our discussions on the Committee of 100 that in addition to the kind of hard issues that we also address some of what were called even then softer issues, uh, the human relations issues. And it turned out uh, not a very good job was done in that respect. And so as I come down here, uh, my brother um, has lived here all his life and has seen uh, this downtown area sprout, and I have too, but he even more so. And so I thought to celebrate the 50 years I'd introduce, put in the congressional record, a tribute to Semcog and all that you've been trying to do. And so let me just close with a few words as someone who grew up here, uh, who used to come down here to pick up my father 
at the Penobscot building, we had uh, Monday nights, my, my beloved mother, Carl, and her late sister and I came down to Sanders and I had every Monday night, we picked up my father uh, a tuna fish sandwich and a Sanders hot fudge. Every Monday night, there wasn't much concern about health, I guess. <laughs> it was in the Donovan building, down a mile and a half or two. Um, and we had just the one car picked up my dad who worked late, lawyers did in those days, Monday night, and uh, took him home. Um, so it was a real pleasure to, to introduce or place in the record this resolution. And so let me just close by saying this. I think there is clearly new energy it's palpable, is it not? I had trouble finding my way downtown, and my brother and I drove cabs here three summers, and I got lost. Um, because uh, the downtown area has burgeoned, I think there's also new energy from a younger generation that is here and many of them are living downtown. And so I think the challenge, if I might say so, before Semcog and all of us is to see if we can take that, the benefit of that new energy as well as the energy of the rest of us and all of your hard work and all of the traditions to really see if we can take the new energy, in a sense, I think, a new point of view, if not a vision, and see if we can pull the strings together in ways that will make uh, this Southeast Michigan an even greater place. Um, it's gonna take looking at all kinds of issues, including transportation, and also the human relations issues, the education issues, all of these uh, challenges to see if the impetus that put together SEMCOG in the first place and that has made you such a valuable part of this effort to see if we can take all of this past and now the promising present into an even stronger future in the metropolitan area. And I just want to finish by saying I think it's going to take renewed energy, renewed dedication, renewed openness, renewed willingness to talk about these issues, transportation, for sure, but all these other issues that are important for a metropolitan area. And so it's my pleasure with that feeling. You know, my grandpa used to take a train every Thursday from Birmingham downtown, every Thursday he came down to buy meats. And I think um, for my family, uh, that history is an inspiration to try to continue to work in our small way to help you realize all of the promise and all of the potential of this area. We fought hard to save the auto industry. We fought hard in many other respects. And now we need to take all of the past and present and make sure that uh, for people who come after us, uh, this place will, will continue to be just a beacon uh, of the state of Michigan and the state of, and the country. 
So I get a little emotional. Okay, I was born and raised here. I ate a bag of peanuts, and they said to my mother, we better take the, your appendix, your son's appendix. So my stubborn mother said, it's the bag of peanuts. <laughs> so I went down on a, on a bus, I think, to have my appendix looked at, and maybe that's an omen for the future. I still have it. <laughs> <laughs> so good luck. And let this energy of Simcog blossom even further. And may this area continue to flower. With your help, I'm convinced it will be. So here is the extension of my remarks placed just last Friday, April 27. And uh, I won't read it because I've already essentially talked about it. It's really my pleasure to have been a tiny part of what you're doing. Congressman, before you leave, just stay here for a moment. Uh, just a moment, you know, we, as we celebrate our 50th anniversary, of course, we think back to 1968, and another great team was our Detroit Tigers in that era. So one of the items that we've done through our, our uh, anniversary celebration has been the, our baseball cards. And I have one that has your picture as well. There's your baseball card, and your stats are on the back. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I'll start a new collection. 